you want to check out the, the whole show, hit the link at the bottom of the screen, available exclusively on odds.com. Two games left on this card. We move to 10 p.m. Eastern. New Orleans Pelicans, 4-5, and 2-2 two and two on the road at L.A. Clippers, 7-4, and 3-2 and two at home. Staples Center, Los Angeles, California. New Orleans, 25th in pace at 98.91 possessions a game. Nice and slow. Clippers, 27th at 97.77. Feels like we've gone into the past when I see pace like this. Yeah. Let's see what's gone on in the marketplace here. The Clippers opened up at minus six. It's where they stand. That's minus six right across the board. This total opened up at 221. There are 220 and a half on the board. And of course there are. Look at this pace. Look at this pace. Now, it's strange that the Clippers pace is this because they've been putting up some big points. I mean, they score 111.8 points per game and to do that on a 97.77 possessions a game, it almost makes me want to double check it. You know? <laughs> and maybe well. maybe I will. They get good shots. That's a lot of points. Okay, yeah. we'll start with the uh, Pelicans here. They've lost three straight. Their Monday night game against the Mavericks was postponed because the Mavericks have COVID running through the squad. They last played in a 118-110 loss at home to Charlotte. I was on that spot. And then Tuesday night's injury report comes out four or five hours ago. They list Lonzo Ball out with bilateral knee. Uh, let's just leave it at that. Bilateral knee injury. Uh, Eric Bledsoe is questionable with a with right eye irritation. Some smoke in the eye. Ball's assist numbers have dropped from last season from 7 to 4.4. His scoring is up a little bit, 11.8, 12.4. He says that, that when Bledsoe's bringing the ball up court, he turns into a shooting guard. He's got to be prepared to hit the three, but he's struggling to shoot the ball. He's hitting 39.4% overall, 30.8% from three. Last season, he went 37.5% from deep. I think getting him off the floor might actually, not, not in the long run, but just for tonight, might help this squad. <laughs> Bledsoe, I think, will play. I mean, it's ridiculous for me to say that when I know nothing about the eye irritation he's facing. <laughs> so I, maybe I shouldn't have, but he's averaging 11.8 points, 4.3 boards, 3.2 rebounds. That's his lowest output since 2012, 2013. So this is what I see happening. I see him having some eye irritation, knowing that Lonzo Ball is not going to be in the lineup, understanding that he's going to get a chance to play the point without Lonzo, you know, demanding the ball and wanting to bring the ball up the floor. And – J.J. Redick on the injury report with right hamstring tightness. He's probable. He's probable. But I think Bledsoe wants to show him what, what he's capable of, and I expect Bledsoe to play and have a big game. After losing to the Warriors on Friday night, the Clippers were fortunate to get past the Bulls Sunday, 130-127. They score 111.8 points per game but allow 110.8. They have a healthy group. They have no excuse for their lackluster play. Leonard went for 25. Paul George went for 28. Lou Will went for 21. I, this team just confounds me. Dutch boy fresh, take it away, Pelicans Clippers. Okay, Jim, I didn't know that uh, that that Lonzo news uh, was real news to me or was news to me. I didn't know that. So, but I did. What I was really looking, the pace stood out to me. Um, the matchups, especially with Lonzo in there, I really like uh, the matchups towards the under. The Pelicans' last four road games have went under. Uh, the under is five and one in the last six when the Pelicans are on the road as a dog. And now for the Clippers, uh, the eight, last 18 games is 12 and 6 to the under as a favorite. And the under is 12 and 6 also in the last 18 versus the Western Conference opponent. So, I mean, to me, the Clippers, you know, they they lock it down when they won, when they want to. The one thing that scares me about the Clippers is their defense off the bench. Um, I don't really see any player off the bench. They do have Zubak, but he's he can't shot, he can, you know, shot block, but he's pretty slow on his feet. So the one thing that scares me is when the Clippers go to the bench, they seem to, uh, to you know, fall off on a defensive end. But with the perimeter they have with Paul George, Beverly, um, and even Batoon and, and Kawhi, those four, those are pretty good solid defenders. And then you got Ibaka um, to shot block. They match up very well against the Pelicans as well. Um, I I wanted Lonzo out there because he is a great defender and he's even better for the under because his ass can't shoot. Um, but the way it's looking, I, I looked at the under, um, when we have under 221 was what I was looking at. I don't know, uh, what is JJ going to be starting to then? Is it going to be Bledsoe and JJ that, that obviously you'd have to think so if, if JJ can get over the right hamstring tightness. 
Yeah, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's uh, more towards the over and, and the under. But, I mean, to me, this game screams under. The pace, like you mentioned, Jim, and just the matchup-wise, I just don't – and the Pelicans, like we talked about, J.J.'s their only shooter. And realistically, Brandon Ingram's probably taking the most jumpers on that team. Um, they don't have they're, – they're, they, to me, they're, them and Memphis are the lowest quality shooting team in the league. They just don't have the shooters. So it's hard. It's every, every game I would like to bet the under. You know, it is getting low, but we're actually getting a pretty good number here. 221. Yeah. I'm yeah. Just, just scared with that Lonzo being out and J.J. being in there. To me, that's defense goes down, offense goes up. What do you think if Bledsoe is in the lineup – what will that do to the Pelicans' pace? That's both these teams playing. And so I did double check that ninety-seven point seven seven. Uh, that's a slow pace for a team that's averaging, you know, one hundred and eleven points per game. Uh, what do you think about the pace? Do you think it speeds up or slows down with Bledsoe carrying the ball up the court? I mean, Bledsoe likes to move fast, so I would only think that's what. When I I don't get the Pelicans because the roster screams run it up and down the court like and don't stop, especially with Lonzo. Um, I don't, I don't get it. So I don't, I mean, I would, I would only look to move that ball up, um, especially if Bledsoe's running the ball, you know, you don't want him slowing it down, dribbling around. You want him to attack. With all that being said, do you want this under 221 circus handing out? That's I don't like that. Honestly, when you said Lonzo's not playing, that's one of the main, he's one of the main factors I like about the under. Um, so I think I'm going to stay off of this one, Jim. The Clippers make me extremely uncomfortable to yeah, have any action with them involved. We were on them on our last show against the Warriors. They were dominating at halftime, and they lost badly in that game. Yeah. Wham, bam. Wham, bam. Pelicans, Clippers, you got to move? Yeah, I don't want to touch this game at all, just because you guys said about those guys. That's how – I mean, as far as the other uh, injury that I thought it was pretty key injury, it was Zubox as well. He has a dominal out, questionable for the game. So him being questionable, that kind of hurts, uh, you know, anybody that's liking the Clippers here because just, just looking at them having um, – um Adams <laughs> and Zion guys you know what I mean like that that's a matchup problem right there and as far as uh, as far as Lonzo being out I think he's uh he's not even averaging the most on the team in assists it's Brandon Ingram yeah. at 5.7 assists and he's averaging the most turnovers so him not being out like you said it it, it looks like it's going to be a plus for them uh at this point I kind of would lean Pelicans here uh, but I don't want to go against this Clipper team. Like you said, man, they're looking like they're pretty well, you know, put together again. They're looking like they're running it pretty good now. And this is not that bad of a line. You're getting, what, six and a half, you said, bro? I, I wouldn't jump on it, though. I wouldn't jump on it, though, just because, like you said, like, uh, there. I mean, there's other people that's out. But Kawhi Leonard and uh, Ibaka, I definitely see a good game for them. I see Brandon Ingram having a good game as well, though. You know, I don't think nobody on their other side could really guard him, so. I think it's going to be a good look for the Pelicans as well. So I, I, I'm pretty totally off this game. I don't really see this one. I just don't want anything to do with the Clippers. I, they're outscoring their opponents by a point. How, how is that possible when you look at that roster? Right. How is it possible <laughs> that the Nuggets would have beaten them in three straight when you look at that roster? There's just there's too much confusion, and – I don't know if Paul George and Kawhi Leonard care. And that's the problem because we're betting our money on these games. So we care right. so much. And I look at Kawhi Leonard and I'm like, I don't know, he care? Yeah. It's Paul, true. George, Paul George making 40 million plus. Does, does he care that I've got 200 bucks on this game? Man, no. <laughs> he definitely does not. Zero. <laughs> okay. Right. Zero. I wonder, if they, <laughs> I wonder if they actually care, though. Like, it's true, though. They, they look real <laughs> soft, though. And, and, and I think Paul George is more mental. Kawhi, I just don't know if he just gives a fuck, really. <laughs> I get a guard play advantage to New Orleans, too, bro. Like you said, uh, Blackso going to get the, a good bump, but he's already at 29 minutes. He can't get that much of a bump. So it's really going to go to Alexander Walker. The Alonzo not being out 30, 33 minutes average the game. That's a lot of minutes to get passed around. So. Alexander Walker seeing it uh, push as well. I think he's just going to get a push. But Bledsoe needs to show – he needs to show – I mean, not only to his teammates, but even just to, that Milwaukee shouldn't have let him go. Like, he, he needs – lowest output since 2012, 2013. Yeah. I think – if – sorry, just if he's in the lineup, I think I will back him in player props. 
Yeah. I think this is I like a that. Crucial, crucial game for him. What were you going to say, Dutch? I was going to say, if uh, JJ's going to be the starting two, I, I might look at PG in the props because he can go off. And with Bledsoe, I don't think I would focus just on points. I think he'd really want to show a complete game. Okay, so let's – So okay, I've got the note down. Rebounds right. and assists. Yeah, points, rebounds, and assists, I think, is what I would do if I – if. You know, we'll see. I'll have to take a good look into those retinas. Make sure that they're <laughs> nice. 